Welcome back to ETV News and Sports. So healthcare in South Africa has been in the spotlight over the past few years and not always for the right reasons. The department faces daily challenges while staff shortages, budgetary issues and the national insurance, national health insurance have been under the microscope. Preparing and preventing the spread of coronavirus is also top of the agenda. Well, to unpack how the department is dealing with all of this, I spoke earlier with uh, the Minister of Health, uh, Zueli Mkise. Take a look at that. Well, joining us in studio is the Department of Health Minister, Mr. Zueli Mkise. Sir, thank you so much for speaking to us. I know that it's a very busy period, a busy time of the year as you try and get ready for all sorts of budgetary plans for the year as well. Um, I think a great place to start, though, is what, what's kept you busy throughout the week has been STI Condom Week. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. <clears throat> yeah, it's been a busy week. Uh, it's been important to um, uh, focus on the uh, sexually transmitted infections and condom week, uh, particularly because uh, what we are encouraging is for people to take care of themselves and ensure that they've got protected sex and that there is quite a lot of uh, support that's coming from government to make uh, condoms available. Even for the ladies, we've got the what we call Maxima that uh, also been uh, introduced, which means that uh, everyone has got a choice to be able to use the, uh, the condom. They basically, as the condoms uh, help that you are able to, uh, you know, uh, control uh, you know, your own safety and also it's part of family planning. It's important for us because uh, we're dealing with HIV infection and we're finding that uh, despite the fact that the numbers of people who are on treatment has increased, but the rate of infection is still showing, particularly for the younger ladies, mm. for the younger uh, women, uh, adolescents, and that's an area of our concern. Yeah. So this promotion is about saying, we're still not there yet. We still need to promote safe sex. We need to pro promote abstinence. We need to promote uh, delaying sexual debut for uh, the younger, uh, younger people. So it's still very, very important. Yeah, it, it really is. When you talk about those young girls, I think it's 15 <clears throat> to 24, where the number right. is very much close to 2,000 a week of young girls getting infected with HIV every week. So it's important to go out there and continue encouraging young women and young men to use protection. Let's, let's talk about some of the fears that South Africans have at the moment. Um, it, 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 it's almost as if, I think there's a fear that we have another HIV on our hands without even understanding it. And now we're talking about coronavirus. Um, something that people are fearing could grow to be a pandemic. But what we have noted though, is that the Department of Health and the NCID has done a very good job of, mm. of letting us know what the plan is. And I think there is a, definitely a sense of security in South Africa in preparing ourselves for um, COVID-19. The concern is, what about the rest of the continent? Well, uh, to, to be honest, the, this is COVID-19 is a new virus that's uh, transformed from uh, being a, a, an animal-based virus <clears throat> through a zoonotic process has come to human beings. Generally, generally, such viruses tend to be more aggressive, more virulent, and uh, they also the other, the other problem is that they tend to not to have a proper history of how they get treated. So the treatment is not known. The, be, uh, the behavior in terms of the manifestation, clinical manifestations, are not known. The symptoms are not you were not used to them. Mm -hmm. So because of that, that's caused a problem. Secondly, in this case, this one has been rapidly sp spreading, and I think it did catch China completely unawares because uh, a lot of spread happened in one area, which is the Wuhan area and Hubei province. And in their reports now, they're indicating that they think that part of the problem was that it spread fast in a hospital setting, which is basically where people have got their other problems. So before they notice what the issue was, then of course it has spread. Mm -hmm. And as a result, then it's gone out now to spread onto the communities out there. And I think the uh, uh, South Africans are right to be concerned. And that's why we try to do everyday updates to ensure that people know what is happening, but also more uh, to deal with this issue, you need uh, uh, public uh, mobilization. Mm. It's individuals who must save themselves from getting the infection. The way they conduct themselves, the way they protect themselves. We've been uh, talking about, uh, you know, hygiene is important. We've been talking about the fact that coughing, uh, people need to actually just block their 
<coughs> their mouth and uh, maybe use their arm like that so that uh, they can uh, uh, reduce the spread. We, the, the virus is spread through what we call droplet infection. And as a result, therefore, it's very easy to spread in congested environment. And if you come to contact with someone who will cough and sneeze, and they will actually spread the, 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 the infection. But uh, we fortunately uh, don't have a single uh, you know, a case uh, of a confirmed virus in South Africa. We've also been very fortunate that at the moment there is no reported case of a South African who is infected in China. Mm. We've got not less than 3,000 uh, students in China, with uh, most of them being students uh, who are attached to various universities, with about 200 people around Wuhan, right. uh, Hubei province. So that uh, situation we're watching and monitoring very closely. It and I, and I asked about the rest of the continent because <coughs> I think that if you look at South Africa in comparison to the rest of Africa, one could easily say that we have one of the best health systems, if not the best in, on the continent. How do we try and share some of our skill, though, with the rest of the Because if we don't, the possibility of, us, of the virus then coming in through our bodies is quite high. You know, uh, the first issue is that prevention is much cheaper and much easier to, uh, to undertake. So most of the continent uh, basic uh, public health precautions are actually what everyone is capable of handling. And so uh, in terms of prevention, I think all of us are in that position where we can prevent. Early screening, where we do temperature screenings and look for symptoms, mm. uh, everyone in the continent is doing that. And so I think that that side is fine. Where, where we're assisting with the rest of the continent is on the tests, <clears throat> because uh, South Africa is a referral center of excellence, where in those tests would be brought to South Africa. And so as we sit here today, uh, we we are always ready to help to support the rest of the continent yeah. in terms of tests. And keeping a close eye on what's happening on the rest of the continent. I, I, I want to move on to another issue now, and that is the, the, the state of our hospitals. I think that when, when we look at the news lately, it, it really is heartbreaking, some of the things we see taking, taking place in our hospitals. Just recently, there was the story of pregnant women sleeping on the floor in um, a hospital in the Northwest. Um, it, just last year, there was a woman who was tied under a bench and, and <coughs> the only thing that happened was the CEO was removed, but the people that did that to her, no accountability. What do we say to South Africans then when we see these things and South Africans start to feel that there is no accountability for when, when people's human rights are, are, are violated in hospitals? Well, I think uh, we have to keep a balance. <coughs> in the first instance, South Africa, uh, has got a, a very a huge population of uh, uh, you know people who are coming into centers, large centers. So you find that the a number of hospitals are overwhelmed by the rapid increase in the number of the nearby population. Yeah. That actually is what puts a lot of hospitals under pressure. That means that the hospital was planned for so many people, but so many more come up, and therefore it makes it very difficult to adjust quickly. It needs a lot of investment, it needs a lot of lead time to be able to cope with that. Yeah. So that's the first issue. The second issue is that we are involved in a program to uh, revamp and upgrade a lot of hospitals. And of course, uh, whilst we are busy with that, there are those that will still be strained. But uh, our, our training is such that we're focusing on improving the quality of care and making sure that the attitude of staff is improved. You know, yeah. the rudeness, the non-caring attitude, we need to get rid of all of that. Yeah, I think we can agree there. <clears throat> now you've raised the issue of resources and capacity. Um, and I, that, that now goes back to budgets. Sure. If, if we have enough to actually deal with the need of people from a budgetary point of view, and how dang we're hearing about um, hospitals having their assets attached uh, because they're in so much debt, um, do we have a budgetary crisis? And, and it is February. Um, we're getting a budget speech soon. Your, your hopes then and what you'd like to hear from the, the finance minister? Well, I think we must first be very um, uh, uh, reasonable about it. The situation in terms of the economy is not good. Uh, the Minister of Finance has reported uh, you know, shortfalls in the revenue collection. So it, not, it will show somewhere. And we believe that uh, health has been underfunded. And uh, uh, that becomes our challenge because we have to make do with less resources. And so to try and balance all of that, we have to now uh, try and improve on your quality, on your training. Uh, but at the same time, what we are focusing on is to increase the staffing level so that we at least can sort the problem of the ratio of uh, you know, nurse to uh, patient or patient to, to, to nurse ratio, do, uh, nurse to doctor ratio, that kind of ratio, it's important so that at least uh, you can shorten the queues and can give people the quality of attention that they require.
Yeah, it's it's a lot, and you're, you're right. We're we're under a very difficult financial place as a country. Then the question becomes: Are we ready for NHI? Can we afford it? Do we even know what it's going to cost us? And and if we are going ahead with it, what are the time frames? I think people have, have have watched the consultations, and now they're wondering: All right, if we're going ahead with this, let's go ahead with it. But let's be clear about the plan. Well, the first issue which we must raise is that uh, the NHI is not um, a, a destination which is a kind of, you know, big bang destination. It's a journey that you take. So you start from somewhere, you incrementally increase your uh, offerings on your services up until you are able to afford a lot more. So the approach is that we're going to introduce in a phased manner, which means it's going to take into account the, what the uh, fiscals can, can afford. Mm. But at the same time, we have li 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 allowed ourselves about a five-year period during which we're going to be putting in place the fundamentals, the pillars to come in place. We have to sort out the hospitals, the infrastructure has to be improved. We have to deal with the staffing. We have to deal with the supply of medicine. We have to deal with the management, uh, you know, uh, culture that people must be efficient and there must be good quality so all of those issues have to be done together whilst we're actually moving towards the full implementation all right mr um Kiza, thank you so much for speaking to us it's been an absolute uh, pleasure that of course uh, mr zuelim Kize, he is the minister of health uh, speaking to us in studio about all things health and expectations for the year ahead do talk